We have an update on AEW drawing the lowest normal time slot audience for Dynamite in almost one year. Also an update on AEW and New Japan's Forbidden Door pay-per-view selling out almost instantly yesterday. And AEW possibly being sued. All this and more in today's AEW news. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of World Elite Wrestling. So let's start off talking about everyone's favorite topic, the ratings for Dynamite this week. Because uh, Dynamite's been on a bit of a slide when it comes to the viewership figures in recent weeks. Right around, you know, towards the sort of midway point of last year, regularly doing over a million viewers. Uh, since the competition of NXT on the same night of AEW has gone, they've been regularly doing a million viewers. And over the course of the last few weeks, they've been continuing to drop off when it comes to viewership. Now, granted, there's been a lot of competition going on, but it certainly is going to be something that those within AEW are certainly going to be aware of. And it's got a lot of people talking on social media as well. So Wednesday's live edition of AEW Dynamite drew 833,000 viewers on TBS, according to Nielsen via Show Buzz Daily. Now, this is down 9.55% nearly 10% from last week's episode, which of course drew 921,000 viewers. Now this week's Dynamite drew a 0.32 rating in the key 18 to 49 demographic. Now this is down 3.03% from last week's 0.33 rating. Now Dynamite ranked number four on the cable top 150 this week with that 0.32 rather rating in the 18 to 49 key demo. Dynamite ranks number 36 in viewership for the night on cable this week, which is actually up from last week's number 37 ranking. Now, Wednesday's Dynamite drew the lowest audience for the show in its normal time slot since May 19, 2021, nearly a year ago, pretty much, which went up uh, which went up against an NBA play-in game. This was the second lowest key demo rating of the year ahead of the February 16 episode. Now, Wednesday's Dynamite, as I mentioned, was down 9.55% from last week, and the key demo was down just over 3%. Of course, the NBA playoffs game between the Mavericks and the Suns dominated the cable top 150 and the NBA playoffs essentially just been dominating cable in general. This isn't just an AEW thing, this is a WWE thing as well. But what is interesting too is that this week's Dynamite viewership was down 24% from the same week in 2021. The key demo rating was also down 24% from the previous year. However, the 2021 episode did not face any competition from the NBA. So, is it going to be a concern for AEW? Well, I think so, because they haven't done a million viewers since the March 23 episode, which obviously they're going to be concerned about. Now, again, granted, in recent weeks, they've had really strong competition. Um, ironically, on the station, well, on the, uh, the, the channel that they were previously on, on TNT. So you could argue, well... If they were still on TNT, they would have been moved. They would have been moved to this, you know, Saturday night, Thursday night, Dynamite, all this kind of stuff. And who knows what the ratings would have been. And as AEW starts to settle into this pattern, because part of the biggest problem with them being on TNT, wasn't it, is that they were moved around a couple of times. And especially once you got into those summer months, it just made it so difficult for AEW to really build up some momentum. They'd build up momentum, do a string of good numbers for them, over a million, and then they'd have to get moved to Saturday. And they'd just drop off or they'd be moved to really late night and then they drop off all that kind of stuff and it would be a big frustration for them. So you could argue, well, this could just be the pattern, I suppose, that AEW falls into when they're on TBS every single week in the same time slot and they're not being moved. We could just see year on year. Every year around April, May time, they struggle because that's WWE's biggest time of the year. On top of that, you have the NBA playoff competition. So it could be a variety of things. And I do expect uh, AEW's numbers to pick back up, especially once we get into June and July. Because, of course, and September, rather, because that's around uh, their biggest pay-per-views of the year. Of course, at the end of May, you've got Double or Nothing. And then after that, you've got All Out and the first week of September as well. So I do expect AEW's numbers to pick up. Again, we're kind of, uh, I guess, trying to see what this pattern is going to be with AEW. But certainly, the fact that they haven't done a million viewers in nearly, what, a month... Uh, is is going to be a concern for them. Absolutely, it's going to be a concern. And during that period of time where the ratings have continued to go down because they've gone down the last, what, one, two, three, four, five weeks in a row, during that period of time, the key demo has also gone down five weeks in a row. So for what it's worth, you can talk about competition, but also you could maybe say that key demo is maybe their key audience um that's going down as well and i don't think it's because that dynamite's are bad shows but 
I myself as a viewer have kind of noticed recently, and I'd be really fascinated to know what you think about this. I have noticed recently that some episodes of Dynamite, not all, but some episodes of Dynamite, you do watch and you sort of go, if I missed the show this week, would I have really missed out? Would I have really regretted missing this show? And sometimes it is no. And that is par for the course when it comes to weekly episodic television also. So it's an interesting one when it comes to Dynamite. Again, I do expect the numbers to pick back up as they get into their bigger parts of the year. But they'll be aware. They'll absolutely be aware this is meant to be the build to one of their biggest pay-per-views of the year in the month of Double or Nothing. And they'll be very, very aware that the numbers are going down. And um, they need to get some of that momentum because, again, if you think about the momentum that they did have... Um, around sort of what June, July, August time last year, they had so much momentum with you know All Out, CM Punk, all that kind of stuff. You know Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, and the numbers were really, really strong. And it does feel like some of that buzz has just disappeared a little bit from AEW, and it's going to be interesting to see how they f- try and get that back. Let's talk about Forbidden Door um, because I've got a few things to say about this as well because I think some of the <laughs> craziness involved with this so new japan pro wrestling and all elite wrestling of course are joining forces for a super show later this summer it's going to be taking place on june 26 at the united center in chicago and it's going to be for, uh, called the forbidden door or forbidden door now pre-sale tickets for the event went on sale yesterday morning and it is reportedly an instant sellout immediately gone um, while over 20,000 people were in the ticket queue at some point uh, yesterday morning with the website letting people in slowly until all available tickets were sold. It took around 40 minutes until every single ticket that could be purchased was sold. So not bad, not bad at all. Now it is expected that a limited amount of tickets will become available when they are open to the general public on Friday, May 6 at 11 a.m. Eastern time. The arena is currently set to hold up around 14,000 fans, but it's possible limited view seats could become available or they could try and expand the seating map i think they'll probably try and do the latter because the demand is very high for this so i think it's funny because for whatever reason and i just can't really wrap my head around this for whatever reason and i can i guess wrap my head around this because put it this way people don't think that wwe either reach out to people in you know on social media or in the in the in j- journalism or wrestling journalism and either grease the palm a little bit or say we'll give you a certain amount of access of a quid pro quo relationship people don't think that exists it does <laughs> it absolutely does if you don't think it does you are very naive to wwe's business practices but for whatever reason there were these people on social media that were saying the show wasn't going to sell out of course it's going to sell out like <laughs> of course it was going to sell out it's in chicago which is a hotbed not just for AEW. it's a hotbed obviously for AEW, but it's a hotbed for pro wrestling in general this is a first time big event that new japan and AEW have come together for a super show so people are going to fly in it's not just going to be people from chicago largely it will be people from chicago but there's going to be a lot of people flying in for this historic event of course it was going to sell out. It was always going to sell out. And some of the theories put on social media about only hardcore wrestling fans are going to be enjoying this, so the only hardcore wrestling fans are going to show. Well, well, yes, and too, but you're kind of doubting like hardcore wrestling fans will be willing to fly somewhere for a show. There is millions of hardcore wrestling fans, not just in the United States, but around the world. Who's to say people from Japan won't come to this show? So the idea that it wasn't going to sell out 14,000, of course it was going to sell out. They sold out the United Center on a couple of weeks' notice on a rumor that CM Punk was going to arrive. Of course they're going to sell out the arena months ahead of time for a first-time ever event. It's laughable. And then the the them response to the people that are like, wow, it's just ticket scalpers. Ticket scalpers have bought up all the tickets and they're going to be selling them at a high price. And maybe that's partially true i'm sure ticket scalpers have purchased a large amount of tickets but they tend to do that when they know the demand is so high that they can charge three four five time face value which i hate by the way it's ridiculous how they can get away with that should be illegal i'm not even sure it is nevertheless the reason they do that and the reason they make so much money is because they know there are people out there that are willing to pay that money for the ticket because the demand is so high for it they wouldn't do that if they thought oh no one's going to be interested so what's the point they do it to make money because they know they can make money from it 
So all of this stuff on social media that was bizarre that females won't be interested, so they're not going to sell out. First of all, females are interested, and it's so ridiculous a comment to make all that kind of stuff. And then people are going, oh, AEW, they're just catering to their core audience for this pay-per-view. What's what's bad about that? Heaven forbid you give your audience what they want, or a, a partial, a part of your audience what they want. Some of the stuff is just bizarre, absolutely bizarre. So it sold out. I'm not surprised that it sold out. It was always going to sell out. And now some of the sort of mental gymnastics some people are doing to try and justify it selling out going, oh, it's scalpers. Oh, it's just uh, because of because of whatever. It's like, come on, just it sold out. <laughs> OK, like, you know, it, it's just it's bizarre. It's bizarre. And scalpers, by the way, work for every pro wrestling show and every show in general. So I just find some of the excuses involved in this just, again, frankly, bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Uh, finally, AEW is getting sued. Yes, a plaintiff has filed a class action complaint against All Elite Wrestling for allegedly violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. Now, according to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, the plaintiff claims that the shop AEW website isn't accessible to visually impaired people. The plaintiff has filed the lawsuit for, quote, and I'm not very good with all of this legalese, it must be said, for declaratory relief, injunctive relief, and compensatory damages, including statutory and punitive damages against defendant named herein and alleges based upon the personal knowledge of plaintiff, the investigation of counsel, and upon information and belief. Now, the filing notes that the plaintiff attempted to purchase products on the shop AEW website in April, but was unsuccessful. The plaintiff wants a jury uh, jury trial. Now, uh, if you're thinking, oh, this is terrible. Um, How could this happen to AEW? AEW dropped the ball on this one, blah, blah, blah. Well, WWE had to deal with a similar kind of situation. The lawsuit is very similar to what WWE dealt with a few years ago. Now, WWE had settled the WWE shop lawsuit out of court for an undisclosed amount of money in December of 2020. So I would think this will probably be a similar situation. AEW will settle and it will be a case of like... You could argue, certainly, from an AEW perspective, they'll be saying, look, WWE got sued for the same thing a couple of years ago. So obviously, it's not just a pro wrestling thing. It's a website thing. If you've got a website and you're a commerce website, even if it's just a Shopify website, make sure you've got these functions set up. So if people... um, you know, aren't visually able or have, uh, you know, are legally blind or visually impaired, that's the word I'm looking for, make sure they can buy products from your website. One, because you'll make money, and two, so you don't discriminate against people with disabilities, obviously. But AEW's obviously been caught cold with the same thing that WWE was caught cold for. People that are setting up these websites aren't setting up all of the functions properly, and it leads to issues like this. Now, some people will say it's just people trying to capitalize or whatever, or some people might be saying, actually, you know what, the person who is legally blind or visually impaired, they might be trying to make a point because saying, look, the only reason I'm doing this is to make sure that your website can be accessible to other people as well. So, you know, regardless of what your opinions are on the lawsuit, they need to get it fixed anyway. So I'm sure it will get settled out of court. And I would hope that AW fixes that on their website. And like I said, if you have a commerce website or a Shopify website, whatever, make sure that visually impaired people or legally blind people can purchase products on there because it's the law. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on today's AEW news stories in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Rest News 365 and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.